Star Wars The Old Republic, also known as Twitter, is an MMO released in December 2011. I started at launch, but continue to come back even today. While subtitling my recent videos, I've gotten to the habit of playing Iceberg Explained content in the background. The idea of this content is someone makes a chart of a topic with an iceberg picture behind it. The top entries are common knowledge of a subject, and the further you go down, the more obscure and unknown the entries become. I thought I'd take a stab at this format because I'm a trend hopping piece of sh**. Today, I'll be covering the Satora Iceberg created by the Instagram account Memes of the Old Republic. Also, all the sources I reference for each entry will be in the description down below. Without further ado, let's begin. Hero Engine This entry refers to the game engine that Satora runs on. The engine was created to operate online games, and it was licensed to Bioware Austin to create the Star Wars MMO. Sator uses a heavily modified early iteration of Hero, as confirmed in a VentureBeat article. The article states that former leader Gordon Walton licensed the unfinished engine and had his own engineers modify it. Bioware publicly announced they were using Hero in 2008, and if we use the Wayback Machine, we can see that there were still patches going out for the engine leading up to the MMO's December 2011 release. It's safe to assume these patches couldn't easily be used with Sator's engine version, as years of modifications had been done. Credit Spam Bots On the starter worlds and main fleets in-game, there are a group of bots that will spam websites where you can buy credits. The bots use the mailbox and chat, and are created and banned continuously. Buying credits with money is against the terms of service, meaning you could get in trouble. Also, these sites are incredibly shady, so it wouldn't be wise to put your info in them. If you take the risk and buy credits, God help you. Novel Series Four novels were created to accompany Sator. In chronological order, they are titled Revan, Deceived, Fatal Alliance, and Annihilation. Each novel stands on its own and offers an original story so it isn't necessary to read one before the other. There are also Swator comic books available for purchase as well. I personally haven't read any of these titles, so feel free to write in the comments what you think of them. Referral Link Scams Swator referral links were part of a program that was discontinued in April 2021. In this program, players subscribed to the game would get a unique URL they could share with other players. The basic premise is that a referrer would get cartel coins to spend in the cash shop if they successfully referred players into the game that solved. The referred player would also get goodies by clicking the link. Here is how a scam worked. A referrer goes into general chat and says they will pay a subscribe player a set amount of credits to use a referral link. They note that the subscriber can't have clicked a referral link before. The subscribe player then agrees to use the referral link. Yes. If these parameters are followed, the referrer immediately gets a free 600 cartel coins and 100 extra cartel coins every month the player stays subscribed. The subscribed player will also get their bundle of goodies. However, the referrer then blocks the subscribed player, refusing to pay them any credits, thus banking cartel coins with little effort. While it's true the referral program wasn't built with credit payments in mind, it was still a scummy tactic that some referrers used to take advantage of players to achieve tons of free cartel coins. It's important to note, there were referrers that paid out credits to subscribe players, but scams still occurred. At the end of the day, both players received goodies, but there was still some manipulation going on. Little Umbrella This item is related to a companion recruitment mission. To recruit companion Nico Akar, you must meet him at the cantina on Zakul. He will ask you to mix him a drink to see what you're worth. When you start mixing, he will know. Don't forget the little umbrella. At the end of the cantina table, there is a little umbrella to pick up and add to the mix concoction. If you remember to grab the umbrella before giving Nico the drink, he will be delighted you remembered. However, if you forget to pick the umbrella up, he will never forgive you. It even shows up in your companion window, so you'll have to remember your screw up until the end of time. Times Square Freeze Mob On December 22nd, 2011, the official Swator channel uploaded a video where they showed a freeze mob reenacting a battle between Jedi and Sith in New York's Times Square. 
It was done as a way to promote the game's launch, and it's honestly super cool and well done. I'd highly recommend watching the video if you haven't already. LEGO Sets From 2012 to 2013, four LEGO sets were created based around Sator. <laughs> the sets were a Republic Striker Starfighter, Sith Fury Class Interceptor, Jedi Defender Class Cruiser, and a battle between Republic and Sith Troopers. The sets have since been retired, so they will need to be bought on third-party sites such as eBay. However, do keep in mind they tend to be marked up. Physical Security Key This is a small key fob that generates a random number code to be used in addition to a password to log into Swator. Its purpose is to make a Swator account harder to compromise. The key fob could be purchased on Origin.com until January 2014, or it can be obtained by buying a Swator Collector's Edition bundle. There is still a mobile security key app that performs the same functions, but the poor physical key is slowly becoming a relic of the past. Poorly rendered NPC crowds. Do you ever just stop deading your tracks while playing and look at your surroundings? I know I have, and I was surprised to see that the crowds in a few areas, mainly class stories, are flat 2D animations or aren't fully rendered models. This was likely done as a way to save on performance and to reduce the workload of placing a large number of NPCs in one area. Han Duo and Greepo One of the starter planets, Hutta, has a notable reference to Star Wars Episode 4 A New Hope. In the movie, Han Solo shoots Greedo at the Mos Eisley Cantina. This is a parody of that scene, with Han Duo being a quick shot and Greepo a pistolier. The only question is, did Han Duo shoot first? I don't care. Also, let the Wookiee win if you're on Hutta. Outlaw's Den There is one place in the galaxy where if you're in a PvP instance, you can be attacked by both factions. That location is Outlaw's Den. It is located on the planet Tatooine, and it's a large area that is filled with various huts, a GTN, and probably a stealther waiting to kill you. Anyone outside of your group or guild can attack you. I haven't gone to Outlaw's Den in a couple of years, but I do have fond memories of fighting people on both the Republic and Empire sides. Guinness World Record Swator was awarded the world record for the largest entertainment voiceover project ever in 2012 by Guinness World Records. At the time of the game's launch, over 200,000 lines were recorded by a plethora of voice actors. Considering this record was awarded at launch, I can't even imagine how many lines have been recorded since then. I pray for the dev who needs to find a voice line from years ago. XP Bonus Armor There is an armor set that allows a player to get 50% extra bonus XP when worn. It's the Victorious Pioneer's Armor Set, and it was obtainable during the Dark vs. Light event in the second half of 2016. The premise of this event was to earn rewards by doing various in-game tasks, and to make light slash dark side choices to determine a future unlockable companion. There were six tiers of tasks, and if you managed to reach the fourth champion level tier, you would earn yourself a full armor set of XP bonus gear. You could reach earlier tiers to get some pieces of the set, but to get the full plus 50%, you would have to reach tier four. Ilum Open World PvP Ilum is a planet meant for players level 50. Now, there are two eras to Ilum's open world PvP. The first one is when the game launched. People would flock to Ilum's western ice shelf when they hit the max level of 50 and join their faction to help battle the enemy. There were objectives in this area that the Republic and Empire could control, but it almost always ended up being a buggy conglomerate of people fighting at 3 FPS and spawn camping bases. <laughs> open world PvP was a mess at launch. Long after Ilum's PvP scene ended, the whole western ice shelf was changed to accommodate an in-game event called Relics of the Green in 2013. This leads us to the second era of Ilum's open world PvP. There are two PvP missions during the Green event where players must go to the central contested area of the map. There is a chance to run into enemy players when completing the missions. The fighting during the event is much smaller scale, and there's no guarantee you'll run into enemies. Also, the Old Republic base from launch now has a Frey Landing Memorial, 
to remember the chaotic past of computers crashing and the deaths of so many players. HK55 Helmet In 2016, there were item incentives to stay subscribed while new chapters for the expansion Knights of the Fallen Empire were added to the game. One of the subscriber incentives was a wearable HK55 helmet, reminiscent of a character met earlier in the expansion. If you notice on the sidebar for the official rewards page, there were a lot of HK55 theme rewards. And people joked about Bioware's hyper-focus on this one character. Ah! The helmet also made a reappearance in the Galactic Seasons Battle Pass as a purchasable item in 2021. Barris Cult Darth Barris is a character that is pivotal to the Sith Warrior storyline. He is also very wide. And he says funny things sometimes. I cannot break him! Nice lungs you got there. Mind your tongue! Barris has memorable voice lines and is the butt of many fat jokes in the community. Maybe one day we can all reach his legendary status. Unreleased haircuts. While exploring Swator, Players have noticed that there are NPC hairstyles that aren't available to use during character customization. Simply put, not all hairstyles seen in the game are in the customization designer. New hairstyles have been added via the cartel market and patches over the years, but we'll have to see if some of these unreleased styles will eventually be available to everyone. Indiana Jones Datacron This entry refers to a Datacron found on the planet Onderon that requires players to complete a jumping puzzle dealing with memorization and spiky obstacles. A Datacron is an object that offers permanent stat increases to players. To get the bonus stats, you must reach the object and escape without dying. It is very reminiscent of the scene in Indiana Jones in the Raiders of the Lost Ark, where Indy steals the golden idol while facing traps and dangers. I personally decided to try this entry for the video. Let's just say... It's quite difficult. That wasn't so bad. Satil Sean's actual age. A form post made by creative director Charles Boyd gave a rough outline of Sator's timeline. Using the outline provided, it can be noted that Jedi Master Satil Sean would be in her mid 50s at the start of the game and early 70s much later in the story. I would have never guessed as her character models look a lot younger. EA wanted to beat WoW. It was strongly believed that publisher Electronic Arts wanted Sator to dethrone the King of MMOs, World of Warcraft. As WoW was a huge commercial success and still is a predominant figure in the MMO community, EA wanted a piece of the money pie. Now, we do have some confirmation of this myth. In 2018, during a Reddit thread showing his career memorabilia, former Bioware Austin creative director Daniel Erickson stated, as we were sold twice, first to an investment company, then to EA, the pressure for this to be the mega hit meant the finger kept being pointed at WoW. The problem, of course, is when you say, okay, first we copy the most successful MMO of all time, then we, you pretty much set yourself up for misery. He then said, the game didn't do as well as EA hoped because they wanted to unseat the king, WoW, with the same product instead of leaning into what Bioware was great at. These comments explain that EA wanted Bioware to follow in WoW's footsteps to become the top MMO. I'm sorry EA, but if this is true, you might have wanted to manage your expectations a little. Batman and Robin on Zakul. If you go to the Platform 6 Cantina on Zakul, you will find the characters Nocturno and Drake Raven. In the past, these two had different armor sets to resemble the popular characters Batman and Robin a nod to the vigilantes of Gotham City. The armor now is vastly different from the old look, but both characters have retained their original names. You even get to fight them in the solo boss rush mode called the Eternal Championship. Unfortunately, it looks like Space Batman and Robin resorted to hiding their identities even further. They also dodged a lawsuit. Corso Original Species Corso Riggs is a companion you can get during the Smuggler story. He is a human in the current build of Swator. However, it was believed in the beta that Corso was a Kifar due to the unique facial tattoos he had. The Kifar species resemble humans, but they come from the planets Kifu and Kifax. I hope I pronounced those right. Facial tattoos indicate their clan affiliation. 
Some footage still exists online of the old look. Jesus Droid. Most four player flashpoints have a solo option available. If you pick the solo option, a combat support droid will spawn inside the flashpoint to help. The thing is, this droid is ridiculously powerful. He heals you when you're about to die, tanks bosses and mobs, deals a lot of damage. He is quite literally a Jesus droid. Sent from the Bioware devs to make completing flashpoints a holy experience. Jesus droid doesn't fear enemies. Enemies fear him. Guild Conquest Exploits of 2020-2021 Guild Conquest is a system where players in a guild all contribute to a total score by doing different objectives. Each guild attempts to invade a planet, where the top guild invading a planet by the end of a week wins. Rewards are also tied to doing well in Conquest, whether your guild successfully wins invading a planet at the end of the week or not. There are communities that take this competition very seriously, and have tried to incorporate dodgy strategies to win every week. Fansite and YouTuber Volk was given an in-game ticket by Discord user Jelly that explains the shady strategies some of these guilds used. These tickets were sent in mass in hopes that Bioware would listen. An excerpt from the ticket states, Every week, recruiters of these guilds send hundreds of unsolicited guild invitations without prior communication to players on low-level planets. These players unwittingly generate conquests for the guild and are subsequently kicked after a few days to make room for more unsuspecting recruits, often depriving them of the end-of-week guild rewards associated to the conquest event. In January 2021, Bioware addressed the issue regarding unsuspecting recruits via a forum post and later patched the entire conquest system in March. With this updated system, new guild members don't contribute to Conquest until the next weekly reset. Also, if a player is kicked from a guild, their Conquest point contributions will be removed entirely. Companion Gift Exploit of 2017 A vendor named Tahuta on the Imperial Fleet allows people to trade prototype gift fragments for companion gifts. Well, in 2017, Bioware made a mistake and accidentally removed the fragment requirement from the vendor entirely, meaning it was possible to obtain companion gifts for absolutely free. You could then sell these items back at a rate of 960 credits per gift. As players realized the ban hammer was likely to come down if this was abused rapidly, they would hide their illegitimate credits in legacy storage or buy high tier items on the GTN to launder the dirty money. The exploit was eventually patched, and action was taken against those who abused it. Items were removed, and some experienced bans. However, goods likely slipped through the cracks. I even remember after this happened, there were people openly talking in the general chat about their successful heists through using the GTN in different storage units. Also, there were Reddit threads backing up what occurred. EV slash KP farm. The Eternity Vault and Karaga's Palace operations are the two easiest raids in terms of difficulty and mechanics. They have been subject to farming by players over the years for multiple reasons, such as power leveling, completing conquest objectives quickly, and gaming reward systems. This is due to there being multiple champion mobs that are quick and easy to kill with a group and the game rewarding the death of high tier mobs. In the current expansion's case, the Renown system, which rewards tech fragment currency, gear, and achievements, can be maxed out by obliterating champion probe droids after the first boss in the Eternity Vault. Face Mask Selling Spam Bots Near the start of The Virus That Shall Not Be Named Spam Bots were advertising in the general chat masks they had for sale. Well, at least it was different than credit selling for once. Tefeth in the Lost Sons comic book series, in the Sator Annihilation novel, a Twi'lek slaver named Tefeth is a character. While slaving for the Black Sun criminal syndicate, she gets captured by Republic SIS agent Theron Sean. Theron and Tefeth eventually form a bond of sorts and travel with each other. At the end of the Forged Alliance's storyline in game, the player receives a mail from Tefeth asking about Theron. During this storyline, you work directly with him, so it makes sense that she would ask. You might have also noticed, Tefeth speaks in broken English. That's because her character speaks in this manner in the comics and in the novel. A clever nod and easter egg to the lore.
Kefis Worship, the GOAT of Swator, it's your boy, Warlord Kefis. He's the final encounter in Explosive Conflict, the fourth encounter in Terror from Beyond, an additional enemy in the Dread Fortress, and his clones are a fourth encounter in the Nature of Progress. Did I also mention he has a companion customization that I used to recreate his look? Anyways, he has always been a recurring face and never seems to go away, so people like to joke about him. He truly lives up to one of his names, Kefis the Undying. Zerka Kratomatics an item so rare that some don't even realize it exists. The Zerka Kratomatic is a tool that allows the player to disguise as a box. You get an achievement for obtaining the crate, and it also never binds to a tune even when used. It's a global drop, meaning it can come from just about any source. People sell them on the GTN and trade them for a large number of credits. It's a unique item, but you either have to be extremely lucky or have deep pockets. I chose option two, and let's just say, I was farming dailies for an entire month after the purchase. Bruh. In the Jedi Counselor story, Companion Lieutenant Oreso says bruh. <sighs> well, he makes more of a sound like he's shocked, but the text without any context is funny. Okay, it's not that funny. Naked Companions in Stronghold Glitch. While relaxing in a stronghold, a player might notice an undressed companion quickly appear and disappear. The ghost companions, as some people call them, are a glitch. Every stronghold in Swator is treated as its own private instance. However, companions can phase into your instance by accident. This is likely due to many strongholds being active on the same planet at the same time. There's no way to prevent this bug. It just happens. Wind Trading Since ranked PvP was introduced, wind trading has been a problem. Wind trading refers to a person or a group throwing a ranked match so others can get free elo and match wins. This is done so a player can reach the top of the leaderboards and get special rewards. Some go as far as creating bots to get away with this practice or pay others to participate. Bioware has banned players who win trade and reset their rating and they warn not to do it. Over the years, people have made videos on the subject and some have criticized Bioware's policing efforts. Garza Butt Cult When playing the Trooper storyline, you'll eventually meet General Garza. She's, uh, thick with two C's, baby! Booty, 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 booty. Pretty much every booty shot of her has become a meme, because she's taking up the entire screen with that thing. Jesus Christ, man, how many squats does she do in a day? Anyways, people like to discuss and laugh at Garza Butt images. It's like the Darth Barris cult mentioned earlier, only not as wide. Chairs functioning originally. Until the Cartel Market Cash Shop came to the game, there was no type of chair emote. The only way to mimic sitting in one was to do slash sit, which wasn't ideal because you were practically laying down, or to find a clickable seat. Eventually, a couple of chair emotes got added to the Cash Shop near the end of 2013. While there was now a way to sit in a chair in game, there was a model added to the emotes, which could potentially clip into other objects. When the Galactic Strongholds update came out in late 2014, it was then possible to sit in a chair-like position anywhere without a large model added to the emote. Our peers rejoiced everywhere, as the chair wars had ended. Darth Malgus and Carbonite Cinematic At the San Diego Cantina Tour in 2015, Bioware played a Knights of the Fallen Empire expansion cinematic that revealed Darth Malgus and Carbonite. Concept art was then shown of the model and other unseen assets. In the Coffee expansion, Malgus never makes an appearance, but this was a neat behind the scenes look at an unused plot point. Maybe more unused ideas and concepts will be shown in the future. HK51 Cinematic Back in 2012, there was an announcement that a new companion, HK51, would be added in a future update. Bioware made a very short cinematic that they showed at San Diego Comic Con and online to reveal the character. Kai Zyken's Log Mount in 2019, you could obtain a log mount by participating in the public test server. It can't go fast. But at least it works! Now from the end of 2021 to early 2022, you can obtain a hollow version of the mount by participating in the public test server. These contraptions were designed by none other than Kai Zyken, a scoundrel who is known for his incredible ability to lie and negotiation skills. 
I record all my holocalls, and that includes the one that warned me you were coming to Rishi. I'll show it to you. Tomoda, get my data pad! Zenobi Chonky. Forgot that she ought to end the Also, he's a vendor for gear at the time of this recording. A true entrepreneur! Darth Maul's face. An important character in Sotora has never shown his face in any section of the game. His name is Darth Maul, and he is part of the Dark Council and an Imperial leader. During Chapter 1 of Knights of the Fallen Empire, he temporarily becomes your companion. For a while, it was possible to preview a helmet on Darth Maul in the character sheet window. By previewing a helmet, it would reveal his face in game for the first time. People pretty much universally agreed that this is a placeholder model, as it's implied in the Sator Encyclopedia that Mars face was so disturbing and corrupted that it drove a moth to suicide. And Mar was known for hiding his true face. Also, it's been pointed out Mars face model appears to be derived from Mandalore the Vindicated, another character in game. Escape Door and Starship If you're on a friend's ship and they're playing PvE space missions, it's possible to activate an escape pod door to get out. The escape pod can't be used for any other reason, it mainly serves as satisfying attention to detail. Jedi Wizard An advanced class of the Jedi Counselor is called a Jedi Sage, but did you know this was not always the case? Originally, Bioware was going to call the Sage a Jedi Wizard, likely because the advanced class uses self-healing and telekinesis. However, due to feedback regarding the name not sounding Star Wars-like, a poll was made to have the community vote on a new one. The options were Sage, Adept, Seer, and Wizard. Jedi Sage won the vote, and the name has stayed ever since. Sator on the Big Bang Theory In Season 5, Episode 19 of The Big Bang Theory, Sator is seen being played very briefly. The episode name is The Weekend Vortex, and there are videos on YouTube highlighting each time the game is mentioned or shown. Ninja Streaming Sator Tyler Ninja Blevins is a Twitch streamer and gaming content creator. Early in his career, he was a professional Halo player, but also began streaming in 2011. He eventually started streaming Battle Royale games, where he saw great success playing Fortnite, garnering millions of followers on social media platforms. What people don't know is that Ninja actually streamed Sator in 2012 and also in 2020 while under a contract with Mixer, a now defunct live streaming platform. Sith Academy Elevator Cult Early in 2021, Reddit user Hail the Latecomer recalled a time near Sator's launch when his brother started an elevator cult. As the story goes, the brother jumped down an elevator shaft in the Sith Academy on Korriban. Instead of letting the character respawn, his brother let the corpse stay on the elevator as it moved up and down between levels. One player got curious about the lifeless body, and its brother started praising the elevator in the chat. Other players joined in on the shenanigans and also jumped down the shaft. It led to a ton of Sith lying dead on the platform, praising the elevator and the sacrifices made to it. Groups watched in excitement as the elevator cult was born. I love reading stories like this. I think there's something hilarious about getting a group of random players to join on a spur of the moment idea. Missing Granny Many video games have a system where if a texture or object geometry is missing, it will default to something set by the game engine. For example, in Source Engine games such as Gary's Mod, the textures will default to black and purple squares, and large errors will replace object geometry. In Sator's case, if object geometry is missing, it will be replaced by a green icon that says Missing Granny, an error set by the Hero Engine. When textures on surfaces are missing, it will say Missing Materials. Maybe one day Granny will be found and the materials restored. Section X Clone Section X is an instance daily area on Belsavis. You complete repeatable missions to stop the evil minions of the Dreadmasters. It's entirely separate from the main Belsavis map and is very expansive and detailed. What's interesting to note is that Section X might have been planned to be on the Belsavis map, not in an instance. Players have found an area that is an incomplete version of Section X out of balance on Belsavis, a clone as the entry name suggests. Another instance daily area 
the black hole on Corellia also has an incomplete clone out of balance on the planet's map. I'm assuming Bioware decided to place these daily areas in an instance to reduce extra game logic. Also, the future content of these areas might have not been done, as the hidden areas have been in the game since launch. The Emperor's Planet Concept artist Christian Piccolo posted sketches he worked on while pitching a planet for Satora. It was titled The Emperor's Planet, showing a grim capital city filled with ancient holocrons and ominous figures. When discussing the sketch, Reddit user Dentface explained that this planet was likely pitched around the time the expansion Shadow of Revan was being developed, as Christian Piccolo put up Yavin 4 sketches at around the same time. If you didn't know, the planets Rishi and Yavin 4 were released in Shadow of Revan. Potentially, there was a plan to have the Emperor, aka Vitiate, go to his own planet in some form later in the expansion or in a future patch. This would occur after Vitiate reveals himself on Yavin 4 in the current build of the game. I am awakened. Republic players, and maybe Empire players, would attempt to infiltrate the Emperor's inner sanctum, as seen by the planet's concept art and from Christian's pitch himself. Demface has stated in a large deep dive he did into Swator's cancelled content that Bioware was toying with an expansion idea where Vitiate would destroy old worlds after Shadow of Revan, but it was scrapped. He states that this is off of memory, so it should be taken with a grain of salt, as he doesn't have a citation to confirm this being true. Though, I can see where this theory comes from, since Vitiate decimates the population of Zyos after his Yavin 4 reveal. Overall, it's an intriguing pitch and could have worked with where the story was headed. Bothawui and Sleheron. The first expansion, Patch 2.0, likely had five planets planned originally. It would consist of Makeb, Zyos, Yavin 4, Bothawui, and Sleheron. The only planet in the first expansion was Makeb, with Patch 2.0 being officially titled Rise of the Hut Cartel. Yavin 4 showed up later in the Shadow of Revan expansion, and Zyos appeared in a future update. However, Bothawui and Sleheron were never introduced. Reddit user Sator Miner showed that Bothawui was potentially going to be a Republic only planet and that Sleheron would be a multi-faction planet. The game files contain data for the class stories of each planet. Sleheron was a planet in Hut space, which was cut from Knights of the Old Republic, as stated by Bioware writer David Gator in 2003. Bothawui was home to Bothans, and was primarily used as a hub for information gathering and trafficking. But that's not where this entry ends. It turns out Bothawui appears in Swator, but not in the way you'd expect. In 2019, Reddit user Zonima was testing the Dantween planet added to the public test server. The player was able to successfully get out of bounds and took screenshots of complete structures far away from the minimap. Then, a legend came in named Really Man LP, who did extensive investigation work. You see, Really Man LP got into the secret area and explored it on his channel in video format. Two months later, he data mined and used tools to view the entire Dantooine map. By viewing the map, he found labels for the different Republic class stories and even an orbital station not accessible to players. Remember how I mentioned Bothawui was potentially a Republic only planet? A half a year later, he made a Reddit post to analyze specific file names pointing to Bothawui on Dantooine. Finally, seven months later, Really Man LP posted pictures of a file found in the game called bot underscore main. It contained pictures, presumably from the cancelled Bothawui planet, that looked just like Dantooine out of bounds. We can conclude Dantooine was added to the game as an event planet, but Bioware seemingly used the remnants of Bothawui to begin building the playable area. Super exciting stuff! Temple Chair Exploit In June 2015, there was an exploit where you could purchase a Temple Chair Stronghold decoration for one credit and then immediately sell it back for 100 credits. It was patched in around 48 hours. Before it got patched, now game producer Eric Musco stated punishments would go out if the exploit was abused. Well, some players want to risk getting rich overnight, even with Eric's warning. You can probably guess how that turned out. Dawn the Exiled Knight I want to emphasize, this entry gave birth to an entire character filled with lore, which is incredible. One day, the Sator launcher was advertising a cartel market item that was 50% off. 
The caption read, Dawn, the exiled knight's armor, now 500 cartel coins. The caption was referring to the exiled knight's armor set, but it can very easily be misinterpreted if we assume Dawn is a person's name instead of a verb. If we go with the name option, it sounds like the cartel market was selling Dawn's armor set to players. Clearly, the developers thought this name misinterpretation was funny, and added Dawn as a character that has a codex entry, achievement, and decoration. I'm glad this absolute unit of an NPC has a place in Swator's history. Imperial Warlord Flashpoint At one point in development, there was a flashpoint called the Imperial Warlord, where Imperial Moff Regis would go rogue, and both Imperial and Republic forces would attempt to stop him. The ironic thing about these events is Regis helps Imperial players stop Darth Malgus as he betrays the Empire in the base game. I guess he wanted to test the might of the Empire like his former ally. <laughs> the premise of this flashpoint was that Moff Regis had a problem working with aliens, and with how the Empire was changing to be more accepting, he sought independence while assigned to defend an insignificant system. The player would need to stop the traitor. The Republic goes after Regis because he has a fleet of warships and was hurting their war effort. This story was actually foreshadowed when working with Regis during the Illum storyline. He acts surprised and outraged when Darth Malgus suggests working with Kalish aliens as allied forces. The Kalish are warlike, ritualistic people. In my brief time on Kali, I observed the ritual by which they chose their war leader, win their respect, and they will defend that mind to the death. Aliens. You want us to recruit aliens. I'm in charge of this operation, not Malgus. A seemingly complete story that did not see the light of day for one reason or another. ERP Guilds. ERP stands for... Erotic Roleplay. There are guilds dedicated to sexual roleplay in chat and use emotes to simulate, uh, doing the deed. Found this baddie on Karaskent, I did. Say dirty things in chat, we will. Time to play Star Wars. Anyways, I've never seen such a guild myself, but they do exist for those interested. Tano Vix Locker. The Republic Troopers Starship contains a locker with Quite the visually engaging photo. It's speculated that demolitions expert and companion Tano Vic put it up. You dirty bastard. Also, fun little Easter egg, the picture seems to be a reference to a photo of Jabba's dancers from Return of the Jedi. Floating body outside the Republic fleet. Here's a neat little fact. It's possible to see a floating body through one of the windows on the Republic fleet. In this footage, I was in the Corsant Departures area of Carrick Station. I'm not sure what other windows you can see the body, as all the footage I found online is in the same spot. But regardless, I feel sorry for the person. They're clearly freezing out there and should come back inside. Stronghold Bug of 2016 Sometimes, I wish this bug never got removed due to how entertaining it was. From the end of 2015 into early 2016, there was a stronghold bug where players could go to the opposite faction's planet or fleet. So if you were an Imperial Toon, you could get to Coruscant in the Republic fleet, and if you were a Republic Toon, you could get to Dromenkos in the Imperial fleet. The steps to do this were pretty simple. You would travel to a stronghold on your account of the opposite faction, and then temporarily deactivate that stronghold. The game would get confused and send you to the opposite faction's planet rather than back from where you traveled. After being sent to the wrong planet, you could board a shuttle to the opposite faction's fleet. Technically, you could even travel to other planets from the fleet. People commonly used guild summons to get many players to these areas. Chaos ensued, as you could kill NPCs and surprise relaxing players. Unfortunately, the bug got patched. Zios in 2.0 As we briefly touched upon earlier, Zyros was likely planned to be in the first expansion, Patch 2.0. Data mined files suggest it might have been an Imperial only planet. An early screenshot of the planet's surface from former lead environmental artist Andrew Collins in 2013. According to Nosy Spy on the website Dolphy, the planet did eventually make its way to the game, being added in Patch 3.2. Dantooine Actual Map Size the event planet, Dantooine, is much larger than you'd expect. 
This is due to the remnants of the cancelled Bothawui planet found out of bounds. Original Third Faction The now defunct Passionately Casual podcast had creative director Charles Boyd on during the 47th episode. At around 28 minutes and 51 seconds, Charles explains that the game originally had three factions, with the third one being mainly an underworld faction. We at one point had three factions and the classes were entirely arranged into those. So the Republic faction was actually just Jedi. So you played as, as a Jedi of one of the three kinds of Jedi that were present in KOTOR. The Empire was the same way. You played as one of the three kinds of Sith that were present in KOTOR and KOTOR 2. The sort of third faction was this mostly underworld faction in that it had the bounty hunter and the spy. Yeah, yeah, it became the agent. Jedi and Sith would be their own separate things, and other classes would be put into the third neutral faction. Also, Charles states a Voss mystic was considered for being a class at one point. Svator segregates gay characters on gay planet. Well, that is quite the entry name. When Svator launched, its base stories only had heterosexual romance. Before release, Bioware had promised they would add same gender romance into the game, but it would be a post-launch feature. They later confirmed the first option for SGR would be on Makeb, the destination of the game's first expansion, Rise of the Hutt Cartel. These romance options would continue to be added in future updates as well. Based on a blog post by former executive producer Jeff Hickman, the developers were attempting to add SGR on a section before the new expansion, but couldn't due to it being more work than they thought. Jeff specifically cites that how they were already delaying content as it was, and were focused on implementing the free-to-play model. Buying the game's first expansion would be the only way to experience SGR initially. This caused tons of websites to run stories on how Swator was limiting same-sex romance to one paid planet, at least until new updates came out after. Since so many sites were running a story on the same topic, some outlets sensationalized their articles and titles to get clicks. One such article by Fox News was titled, Star Wars Game Segregates Gay Characters on Gay Planet. Alright then. Other outlets also ran with the idea of calling Makeb the gay planet. Vet Slave Controversy Early in the Sith Warrior story, you get access to a companion named Vet. She is a slave who can be shocked by the player multiple times if they so choose. It's worse. Stop! Eventually, you can remove the shock collar and even romance vet, but it is technically possible to keep the collar on if you desire. The game allows you to choose how evil you want to be. After launch, a few online articles critiqued how players were allowed to hurt a slave character. One article published in the Daily Mail was surrounded in controversy. The writer was critiqued for how he reported information and for alleging that treating vet decently isn't popular and that gamers rather hurt her using a Kotaku post as a source. The Kotaku writer states that he saw people in general chat regularly talking about treating Vet poorly, but is very clearly talking about his personal experience and being sarcastic in the process. Yeah, that wasn't good source usage. Opinion pieces discussed the DM's article and assertion, and even a survey on behaving evilly in Sotor was conducted by the magazine Religion Dispatches. 369 players were surveyed about their evil behavior in-game and the effects. The survey results contradicted the DM's article claim and explained that lessons might be learned through playing evil characters. Regardless of the articles and survey results, it's important to emphasize that the game continuously lets you know you're being a jerk the longer you shock vet, there's an option to take the color off, and you're already working for the Empire, a dictatorship that actively kills and abuses innocents in a fictional video game. This in-game context is important to the conversation, but not all articles elaborated. Permanently Lose Companions A feature in Sator's beta was that some companions could be killed, and it's believed that certain companions could even leave you. The total amount tends to be debated or not fully known. This was removed early on because there were complaints about losing spec companions. At launch, companions were only a set spec of DPS, tank, and heals. A big complaint stemmed from the fact that a healing companion could be killed on a DPS slash tank player. It's been said that Malavai Quinn from the Sith Warrior story caused complaints, as he was a healer that people chose to kill. Supposedly, 
Reddit user Flame of Missly saved some dialogue from the beta client and uploaded it on Dropbox. In the uploaded text files, we can see conversation text alluding to killing Malavai Quinn. With how the game works now, companions are set to any spec a player desires. In future expansions such as Knights of the Fallen Empire and beyond, you can kill companions in the main story and in alliance recruitment missions. Your main crew can be retrieved later via a terminal for the dead and lost. Holocaust Achievement During the Jedi Knight story on Belsavis, Executor Kranis plants explosives in a power core that could destroy an entire space system. This would mean the death of trillions. The player must disarm the bombs and stop Kranis' evil plan. Originally, the title of the mission and achievement attached were called Holocaust. The word itself means destruction on a mass scale, which aligns with what the player is trying to stop. However, the term the Holocaust is used to describe a tragic and horrific event in World War II. An achievement named Holocaust without any context was definitely confusing if browsing through the achievement tracker, and there were people put off by the name regardless. In 2020, Bioware renamed both the mission and achievement to Impending Doom. Vet's Suicide in Beta As we went over earlier, Vet is a slave who becomes your companion during the Sith Warrior story. You can remove her shock collar, or continue to hurt her. If a player shocked Vet enough times, it was said that the companion would jump out of an airlock and end her own life. But, Vet's suicide was just a messed up rumor. You see, former lead writer Hall Hood confirmed on his Twitter that this wasn't true. Hall has since deleted his Twitter, and no archives of the tweet exist, but we can see he ended the rumor based on the responses in an old Swator thread. Dev World During game development, developers must test different assets for a game to be polished and released smoothly. Once again, Really Man LP was data mining files from the game, only this time, he found inaccessible worlds, likely dev worlds, used for internal testing. It's fascinating to see a bunch of items lined up, little islands, and a variety of labels. And who knows, maybe the devs spawn in raid bosses and fight them with OP gear in their free time. I know I would. Nudity mod. Now I knew this mod existed, because... no comment. In all seriousness, there is a mod that can make your character completely nude. It replaces the texture files on the client, so I'd be careful if you were to use this mod. Use it at your own risk, as with all things that modify game files. And that's the end of the iceberg. Thanks for watching the video! It was a lot of fun to research the entries, and explaining this iceberg made me reminisce on all the memories I've made in Swator over the years. I also want to shout out Google Translate for teaching me how to pronounce Star Wars names. Bothawui. And quickly before I go, my channel is demonetized, so if you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing, leaving a like, and maybe check out the Patreon. But with that said, I will see you guys in the next one.